What is going on guys? Scorpion Slayer 66 here coming at you for another month of vinyl pickups. Now I didn't pick up as much stuff as I normally do so I might talk about this a little bit more and I got a couple cassettes and stuff like that so I'm going to rifle through those real quick. So these two were $2 a piece. The first one is the Velvet Underground Live 1990. I don't remember what year this is, but I also have it on vinyl and also New Order's Technique. Now, um, I just thought New Order would sound really dope on tape. Um, I don't have many of their records, unfortunately, but I thought they would sound pretty cool on a more analog and warm format like cassette. And I made a small little purchase from Asthmatic Kitty Records a while back. Uh, they did a pre-order for the new Sufjan Stevens single known as Tanya Harding. And I picked up the 7 inch of it. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, I'm not usually a fan of 7 inches, but obviously you guys know me with Sufjan. Uh, one of my all-time favorite artists. It is a beautiful, beautiful marbled blue vinyl. Really nice. Uh, accents of white, a little bit of darker blue, and it does come with a download for the single, which is pretty cool. So yeah, this was uh, really cheap. I think it was like $8 or $10 or something like that. And along with the seven inch, I also bought the cassette version of the Tonya Harding single on a really beautiful like blue cassette. And it also has a download as well. And the Sufjan Stevens, the greatest gift mixtape. This is stuff left off of his Carrie and Lowell album, which is like one of my favorite albums like ever uh, comes on a gorgeous like yellow uh, cassette as well. Um, I'm still looking for the vinyl of this, but I thought I would get the cassette in the meantime because I just want everything to do with Sufjan Stevens. All right, so getting into the vinyl, the first thing I picked up, this was a $2 bin find, and this is Pretty Poison Laced. Now, I haven't gotten a chance to listen to this yet, but when I put it into my Discogs, it said that it was like funky rock electronic goth rock. I, it, apparently, it was like new wavy too. Um, so, yeah, I bought this off of the cover alone. I loved the cover photo and the designs and the colors. So, yeah, um, definitely got to listen to this at some point soon. Another $2 bin find, this is Jim Croce's You Don't Mess Around With Jim. Now my one friend is really into Jim Croce and I've listened to him and enjoyed him before, but uh, my one friend really got me into him as of recent. So when I saw this for two bucks, I had to grab it. Uh, cool gatefold on the inside there, all the lyrics and everything. But yeah, um, really nice. It's just really good uh, acoustic, like folky type stuff. Uh, I really love his voice and his guitar playing is really nice as well. So next up, this was like six bucks. This is the Yes album. This is Yes's debut. Um, I've always been kind of a fan of Yes, but I was never like super heavily into them until rather recently when I've been more into progressive rock. Um, but yeah, uh, this is a really good debut from this band. Um, obviously, they would go on to make things like Close to the Edge and Fragile, which are like two of the best progressive albums of all time. But this is really great stuff. Um, if you're trying to get into prog rock at all, this is a really good place to start. This was also like five or six bucks. This is Roberta Flack's first take. Now, uh, I haven't gotten to listen to this yet, but I always go digging in the jazz section at my local store. And I remember seeing this album cover somewhere and one of my friends was trying to show me this a while back. He said that this was one of his favorite jazz albums. So yeah, um, I don't know if this is an original. I know it's a very old pressing. I believe it's an original, um, but yeah. I haven't gotten a chance to listen to this yet, but I am very excited to. Um, I've seen that album cover all over like greatest albums of all time in jazz lists. Uh, most times it ranks as her finest. So yeah, very excited to have it. And again, for like five bucks, still in the shrink wrap, it was a hell of a deal. So next up, this was like 10 bucks, I think. This is the Incredible String Bands, The Hangman's Beautiful Daughter. Now, these guys are from very close to me. So I've obviously heard of these guys my whole life, you know, in terms of me loving music and being in like the musical community in my area. I've heard about these guys and how legendary they are. I've just never gotten to listen to them very heavily. But yeah, uh, when I saw this, I had to have it. I looked it up. This is an original from the town that they are close to me from. So yeah, it's very cool stuff. Um, it's just 
really absolutely astonishing, like folky rock music. It's almost like a, something Fleet Foxes would have been inspired by in a way. So yeah, very cool stuff. Uh, they were signed to Electro, which is also pretty dope considering that they had the doors and love. So yeah, very cool stuff. Um, obviously I probably had to own this being from my area, but uh, I finally found a copy and I'm very happy that I picked it up. Next up, I picked this up out of Sure Curiosity, and this is Tom Waits' Closing Time, the newly remastered version. Now, I hated the uh, remaster that they did for Real Gone. Um, I thought it did the album complete injustice, so I picked this up uh, going into it kind of cautiously and unfortunately I honestly haven't had the time but I haven't heard a huge uproar about it so I'm hoping that it's good because these remasters need to be good because I don't feel like paying the amount of money that original Tom Waits albums go for but yeah um, I will get to this very soon I'm hoping uh, it's just been a hell of a month for me so I've never really been into the Grateful Dead, but as of recently, my really close friends have been showing me them and I've been enjoying the shit out of them. So I picked up two Dead albums. The first one is Shakedown Street. Now, uh, this one's pretty underrated, I think, compared to a lot of the more appreciated Dead albums. I really love the sound on this. It's like super funky. But yeah, this is an original and it even came with the original sticker still, which was pretty crazy that it still had this so yeah uh unpeeled still in there and yeah uh just really great album original pressing on arista uh and just really underappreciated album i keep saying it but it really truly is and the other dead album that i picked up is terrapin station definitely another underappreciated one in my opinion i mean the last song the medley godly just absolutely amazing uh, again this is an original on a rista um and yeah uh, just one of my personal favorites i d don't know why it just really really is uh i love these lavender record sleeves uh i really don't think i actually have any that are the same color so very cool like i said both of those were originals and i paid 18 dollars a piece for them which is not bad considering that again they are originals and they are both in really great shape next up this was like six or seven bucks this is gil scott heron and brian jackson's from south africa to south carolina now i've always wanted some gil scott heron in my collection uh but it's kind of hard to come by in my area or at least i just have never seen it so when i saw this i immediately had to grab it and buy it. Uh, I literally just picked this up like yesterday um, and I've been busy with family stuff so I haven't gotten to listen to it but I absolutely love all the artwork and the design um, and yeah this is absolutely awesome so very hyped to listen to this. I mean obviously the revolution will not be televised is like one of the coolest things I've ever heard. It's just really kind of bone chilling and I've wanted to listen to a lot more of his stuff so I was very happy to pick this up. So I was really into film soundtracks last month. It was probably like my biggest obsession last month. And I picked up the Blade Runner 2049 soundtrack done by Benjamin Walfish and Hans Zimmer. Now, this was my favorite movie of last year. It's probably honestly one of my favorite movies of all time at this point. Um, but yeah, the soundtrack is just absolutely ambient, droney, like bliss it's absolutely amazing like the textures on this album the compositions are just so gorgeous and just oh my god it just every time i listen to this i think of the movie and it just like gives me shivers and i want to go watch it really love the record sleeves on these uh just really nice artwork obviously the colors of the movie were absolutely amazing uh, again on the back here just absolutely stunning stuff and it does come with a download which was pretty cool to see so yeah um, just really good stuff if you guys like ambient type of deal uh, this is really good stuff lots of drones lots of just really interesting sonic stuff going on here so yeah uh, amazing film and amazing soundtrack so next up, I got a repressing of Can's Tago Mago. Uh, just absolutely amazing Krautrock music. Krautrock is like one of my favorite genres in terms of the history behind the genre and what it stands for. But yeah, just absolutely incredible music. Very experimental, very out there, kind of progressive-y. And I love the design on the packaging here with all the different colors of the front cover. Uh, but yeah, this is just some really great stuff. If you guys want to hear some like absolutely wild stuff happening, 
uh, in a country that was disheveled and kind of pigeonholed into a very negative view. Um, listen to some of the Krautrock greats, especially stuff like Can. This stuff is just absolutely mind blowing. And yeah, um, if you guys have never listened to this, I highly recommend it. Um, it's very uh, interesting, it's very dynamic, and um, it's just very musically interesting to me and it's kind of more surface level where it's not like hard to get into like a lot of stuff so yeah uh, just really great stuff if you guys are into things like pink floyd and stuff like that this is just a more wacky version of that to me so these next seven all come from double decker records i took a friend there who had never been there before and yeah i ended up spending uh, quite a bit of money uh, the first thing I got is the Pixies' Trompe Le Monde. Uh, this was the last of the classic Pixies albums that I needed for my collection. Absolutely love the packaging on this. Those eyeballs are so fucking weird. But yeah, uh, Pixies, just seminal alternative rock band, uh, changed a lot about how music was made from after they debuted. And their first four records are all just absolutely classic albums. So yeah, um, I was trying to get all four of them and I finally have all of them now. Next up is New Order's Low Life. Now, uh, I've been wanting to get more New Order in my collection because they're a band that I absolutely love and I want to engross myself in more. So yeah, uh, this one is just absolutely fantastic. I love the packaging on this. I'm really into neutral colors, as I say a lot in my videos. But yeah, uh, the packaging is absolutely amazing and the music itself is absolutely amazing. It's just very synthy, post-punky, new wave goodness from the guys that were kings of the post-punk genre just a few years earlier so yeah uh, really awesome it does come with a download code so yeah very cool stuff uh, really need to pick up more new order in the future always happy to add to my jazz collection this is Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers Mosaic now um, I want to be a drummer uh, it's just something that I want to do really badly I want to be good at it at least. So yeah, Art Blakey is a huge inspiration for me, especially since I want to be kind of technical with how I approach drumming and such. So yeah, this is just really fucking amazing jazz uh, and his drumming is just so standout and incredible. And I love how they replicated the original sleeves with that for Blue Note. So very cool stuff. Um, obviously Blue Note really amazing record label their pressings are 99 percent of the time absolutely stunning and especially for the price you cannot beat them again always happy to add to my jazz collection this is thelonious monk's brilliant corners um in my opinion my favorite of monk's stuff that i've heard so far i haven't heard a ton so i can't give like a very well-informed opinion but uh, out of the stuff i've heard this is definitely my favorite uh, it has sonny rollins on here which is absolutely amazing and yeah this is done by wax time i believe and the pressing on this is fantastic uh you can hear just every little piece to it so yeah really simplistic labels on the inside side as well but yeah uh, if you guys are looking to get into some jazz piano type stuff you definitely can't go wrong with monk he is the god of that scene Next up, I was very stoked to find this. This is the Zombies Odyssey and Oracle. Uh, this is a like 1999 pressing or a late 90s pressing. It's definitely not the best one in the world. But yeah, I've been wanting this album for a very long time. It's just an absolute psychedelic masterpiece. It's just gorgeous, but it has a lot of dark themes behind it. So there's really more to go into it the further you look into it. But yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, Time of the Seasons on here, Carousel 44, A Rose for Emily, Changes, Butcher's Tale. It's just a lot of the writing on here is very dark and it clashes very nicely with the psychedelic instrumentation going on. So yeah, uh, very awesome stuff. And this cover art is ridiculously awesome. <laughs> Next up is Curtis Mayfield's Superfly. Now, another incredible film soundtrack, uh, one of funk music's greatest albums. And this is a really interesting pressing where this just opens <laughs> and it has like the track listing here and then the vinyl slides out from this way. But yeah, uh, just quintessential funk music i mean this is how i got into the genre um and i've just been looking for this album for a long time uh and i finally found it for 10 whole dollars but yeah um absolutely amazing album uh, i've yet to see the film unfortunately uh, i've heard it's definitely not as good as the soundtrack but uh yeah absolutely incredible album definitely listen to this if you haven't 
This was definitely one of my favorite finds of the month and this was the last thing I found at Double Decker. And this is Frank Zappa's Lumpy Gravy. Now this is an original pressing and this was Zappa when he was doing uh, orchestral stuff. Um, I can't pronounce the name of the orchestra, uh, so I apologize for that. But yeah, um, just this album shows how much of a genius Frank Zappa was. And it's just absolutely mind-blowing that he transitioned into rock music so perfectly with how avant-garde and weirdly composed this is. So yeah, um, and then right after I bought this, I found out they were doing like a... Uh, the companion piece album to this for Record Store Day, so that's very awesome. But yeah, uh, this was awesome. This was like $20, and again, it's an original. Um, and yeah, this is absolutely mind-blowing. This is more of a Zappa deep cut, but if you really fuck with Zappa, this album is mind-blowing. So during the month of March, I saw Godspeed You Black Emperor live in Philly, and I went to Repo Records before the show, and the first thing I picked up is Slint's Tweez. Now, if you guys know me, uh, I have a review of Slint Spiderland on this channel. It's absolutely terrible. But um, yeah, it, they're one of my favorite bands. Spiderland is like one of my absolute favorite albums, and yeah, their other only other studio album is actually really fantastic and gets so overshadowed by Spiderland. But yeah, this is more uh, hardcore-y than Spiderland was. It was produced by Steve Albini. Um, it's very noisy, very heavy. So yeah, um, it comes with a lot of cool stuff. It's got like this little poster um, and it's kind of gross, but it's also very interesting. And yeah, uh, just absolutely amazing stuff. If you guys have ever listened to Spiderland and you enjoyed that, I would highly recommend you check this out. It's like 30 minutes long. Um, and they also have an untitled little EP as well. So yeah, um, really amazing album and this cover is fucking sick. Next thing I picked up is this Minor Threat live show. This is Black Sheep in Gotham, live at Irving, Irving Plaza, New York, May 15th, 1982. So they essentially just play their first two EPs in whole, or their first two seven inches in full. And if you guys know me, uh, Minor Threat's first two seven inches is like one of my favorite albums of all fucking time. So yeah, this is a badass live show. Uh, the energy is wild. Um, some people might get a little offended by the things Ian says, but um, I don't think they were really caring about if you got offended at the time. So yeah, I uh, absolutely love all the photography on this as well. So yeah, um, just really crazy amounts of energy. Uh, if you guys like punk music at all, uh, try and seek this out. It's only like 15, 20 minutes. And the last thing I picked up at Repo, this is Flying Lotus's Cosmogramma. Now, I'm a huge Flylo fan. Like, I think he's one of the best producers out there. And uh, yeah, this is my favorite Flylo album. I just love uh, the arrangements on this one the best. I love like the atmosphere and like all the textures and stuff like that. This felt the most calculated to me, but it also had a lot of personality and a lot of human elements to it as well. Um, and Flylo is just a visionary beyond words. I mean, the album art he does, all of the stuff he does for Adult Swim, all the producing he does for other people with his Rafi Go uh, Captain Murphy. And he also makes like short films and stuff like that. So yeah, Flylo is uh, definitely one of my favorite musicians working right now. Uh, I definitely need to grab more of his stuff soon. My pre-order for this finally came in, and this is Open Mike Eagle's Brick Body Kids Still Daydream. Uh, if you guys watch my list, this was my second favorite album of last year and my favorite rap album of last year. Um, I'm just absolutely in love with this album. Um, and before I go into the album, look at this gorgeous pressing. It's like gold with white splatter. It's just, it reflects so well on the light. But yeah, Open Mike Eagle, this is just my favorite project of his yet. It's so low key, so vibey for lack of a less corny term, but he just crafts these really interesting instrumentals. They're just so like, different and dynamic and then his like really just chill rapping it's just it really blends together to create this really engrossing atmosphere and then once you start breaking down his lyrics and all the themes he's talking about it adds a whole nother like depth to the album and i just can't de describe how many times i listen to this and how many things i still find in his lyrics to this very day so yeah uh this is definitely one of my favorite projects of the decade so far if you guys have not checked this out uh, i highly 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 recommend it <laughs> 
We saw 2049 earlier, so obviously I had to get the original Blade Runner soundtrack as well by Vangelis. Now, obviously, uh, I can't say much about this soundtrack. That hasn't been said. It's one of the best film soundtracks of all time. Um, it's absolutely astonishing, um, and it's just so captivating like you get really lost in it and then especially if you've seen the blade runner movie just like envisioning the scenes in your head it's just really crazy so very cool and i love the inner labels on this it's not this on one side and then the cover art on the other very cool stuff um if you guys have never seen blade runner um you need to uh and if you've never listened to the soundtrack you need to Another one of my favorite film soundtracks, this is Goblin Suspiria. Now, Suspiria is a very fucking trippy, wild, uh, horror film, psychological, and it's just, this soundtrack fits it so perfectly. Goblin was an absolutely incredible band. This is some cool, like, Italian prog rock with a lot of uh, dark, dark atmosphere going on. But, yeah, um, these screenshots don't do the movie justice at all but um yeah this is just absolutely amazing stuff if you guys like progressive rock and you're looking for a more dark edge with it uh this is very fascinating stuff with a lot of musical finesse behind it i was very happy to get this this is the vinyl me please pressing of sorcerer by miles davis now i didn't uh join the club for this i bought it second hand for pretty much the same price it went for but yeah uh very stoked to have this this is a very underappreciated miles album uh comes with a bunch of stuff uh, i don't think i can show it all off right now but if you guys want to see an in-depth review on this let me know and i might do it on my vinyl corner channel but yeah the main attraction to this is the uh lilac colored uh vinyl here at least that's how it was described i believe or no it was orchid purple that's what it was but yeah uh really gorgeous pressing uh and it sounds phenomenal but like i said there's a lot of cool extra stuff it comes with as vinyl me please always does so if you guys want to see a review of this let me know and last but most certainly not least this is love forever changes now this is like one of my favorite albums of all time this is just peak psychedelic rock with some of the most captivating lyrics uh musically complex for its genre instrumentals and it just has such an incredible atmosphere and it's so ever-changing in terms of its genre that it messes with but it always has a psychedelic rock base to it it just weaves so many different genres into one kind of incredible psychedelic experience and it's just amazing and this is the rhino reissue that they did in 2013 and this pressing is absolutely awesome so yeah um one of my favorite albums of all time and uh definitely my favorite thing i picked up this month all right, guys, so that is everything I picked up in the month of March. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite thing I picked up was. And while you're down in the comments, hit that like button, subscribe. And until next time, guys, take care.